on this edition of Paint Your Engine, we're going to have a go at Gresley's Hush Hush. Now instead of a realistic setting, let's try and go for something a little more arty. Let's try and imagine for a moment that this engine was designated to the Silver Jubilee train and we've got to make a poster that shows how exciting this new London to Newcastle service is. The Hush Hush is probably best known as an experiment that didn't take off, but its development is interesting in that it didn't have a conventional boiler. It had what's known instead as a water tube boiler, which is a kind that was used in shipping of the era. In the early 1920s, Nigel Gresley was looking at ways to improve the efficiency of his engines, and while he was finding his feet with his A1 Pacifics, he looked across the pond to see what was going on at the Delaware in Hudson. As it happens, they ordered a quartet of 280s from Alco with water tube boilers in 1924, the first of which was named after famous American civil engineer Horatio Allen. They were said to be fantastically slow but also impressively thermally efficient. And it's interesting to note that while building their water tube boilers, Alco consulted marine specialists Yarrow & Co, who by this time were based just west of Glasgow on the River Clyde. So in September 1924, Gresley began collaborating with Yarrow on their own water tube boiler to power one of Gresley's engines. It was initially going to be another 462, but the boiler turned out to be so long that the training wheel set couldn't possibly support the firebox, so Gresley ordered that an extra wheel set was squeezed in at the back. This made the engine look like a 464, but because of the way it was engineered, the engine was technically a 4622. So you can think of it as a Pacific GTI, somehow. Now the engine is famously known for being painted grey with steel bands on the cladding, Whatever you do, don't believe the Hornby model that's been sold in apple green, because that never happened. At least according to the RCTS. The reason why the locomotive is known as the Hush Hush is because development of the engine was kept strictly under wraps, even to the extent that, after the boiler was completed, it had to be strategically sheeted up before being transported to Darlington for final assembly. The engine was outshopped as l &E number 10,000 in December 1929 and was, quite simply, unlike any other loco the country had ever seen before. Don't forget, this was still a few years before streamlining as we know it became all the rage. Wall Street had just crashed, so the stock market was in disarray. Unemployment was on the rise as Britain's heavy industries began to decline, so things were slowly beginning to slump. But none of this dampened the buzz surrounding the Hush Hush, which carried that nickname through her life. Interestingly, the engine was to have been named British Enterprise, and while the engine never carried a name, it is said that the British Enterprise nameplates were still produced. Indeed, word has it that they were seen in Darlington Works as late as 1956. There's also a story that Gateshead engineman nicknamed her the Flying Sausage, which makes it sound like the sort of working class equivalent to the Flying Scotsman. Imagine if the LNER's publicity department gave one of their expresses that name and ran the two in conjunction. Though, given their tendency to put regular service trains to one side to let the Silver Jubilee go past, I think naming a train service after a projectile hot dog would be in their least interest. The Hush Hush was classified as W1 by the LNER, undergoing six years of testing. And truth be told, the water tube boiler proved quite successful. But almost immediately, the engine needed her superheating reduced, her injectors needed replacing, her valves needed adjusting, and her blast pipe needed reducing in diameter. So she didn't enter service until the 20th of June 1930. In service, she was based in North East England, so she had easy access to Darlington Works for repairs and further modifications. She was built as a four-cylinder compound, with a boiler pressure of 450 psi and a tractive effort of 32,000 pounds, so on paper she had the same pulling power as an A3, but in practice the water tube boiler was said to be more efficient. Coal consumption was said to be up to 46 pounds per mile, which compared to the original A1s of the 1920s was an improvement of between 4 and 10 pounds per mile. But by 1936, there didn't seem to be much point in developing the engine further. The original A1s had been re-engineered enough to steam properly, with most of them being rebuilt into A3s. Flying Scotsman and Papyrus had officially reached 100 miles an hour, and the new streamlined A4s didn't just capture the public's imagination, but they were taking the world by storm in the record books. And out of 1,888 serviceable days, it's been said that the Hush Hush spent 1,105 of those days out of traffic. Not so much a flying sausage 
as a rather sorry looking last chipolata in the middle of the table that everyone's too polite to eat. As a result of having so much downtime, the Hush Hush was rebuilt into a more conventional engine in 1936. She emerged with the same 4622 wheel arrangement, but an ordinary locomotive boiler, A4 casing and three cylinders with Gresley's conjugated inside valve gear. Since then, she has been said to be the most powerful, non-articulated express steam locomotive in the UK. Sadly though, even in rebuilt form, the engine never achieved the same level of success as the A4s. While she was more powerful on paper, with attractive effort exceeding £41,400, she didn't really achieve the same levels of distinction and fame as Flying Scotsman and Mallard. So as a technical exercise, she was a fascinating bit of kit, but practically speaking, she just wasn't a favourite among the LNER's engineers and accountants. The engine was withdrawn in June 1959 and was later broken up for scrap. And the old water tube boiler? Well, it carried on as a test bed at Darlington Works until it was broken up in 1965. As is, the Hush Hush remains in people's memories mostly through an old movie tone newsreel from 1930. A truly unique design inside and out. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed painting it. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more, then please feel free to like, share, subscribe, discuss, contribute to Steam Locos in profile on Patreon, and why not have a go yourself? Why not paint your engine? <laughs>